apnic. Does anyone know that word? It comes from apnea. Yep, exactly right. It's the adjective form. Apnea means not breathing. So an apneic patient is a patient who is not breathing. This gizmo here is your bag valve mask, and it's got a couple components. It's got a reservoir on it, just like the non-rebreather mask. The difference is that the non-rebreather mask, that, that bag must be full for the device to be working. This bag will probably not fill, and that's okay. All right? It'll fill partially, but it's not going to inflate like a balloon and be taut. And we're not concerned about that with this device. This uh, has a mask that goes on to the patient, right? It's one of these inflatable masks that I need to make sure I get a good seal with. We'll talk about seal in just a minute. And then you can see that it's got some valve components there so that when I squeeze this, uh, this reservoir bag, or I guess this is the, the bag itself, this is the reservoir. When I squeeze the main bag, this valve moves up and only oxygen coming from the port here and in the reservoir goes through the mask to the patient. And then when I release, the valve seals so that any time the patient exhales, it just comes out this hole here. And the passageway is large enough that the patient can vomit a little bit and maybe some of those juices can spray out of there as well. Larger chunks may, uh, may gum this thing up, but some secretions and things will make it out of here. So that's nice. I connect this to oxygen when I use it. Oh, this thing's already ready to go. Not quite. And, uh, yeah, getting ahead of myself here. So, apneic, uh, apneic patients, voices opening the airway, voices inserting an airway adjunct. I think I mentioned before <coughs> that the, the one that we would want to use would be this one here. So, in we go. Got the OPA in place. Select appropriate size mask. For our class, we didn't bring too many different size masks. The ones in the bags are all the same, and they're the ones that fit our mannequins. But in fact, there's an adult mask, and then there's a child mask, <coughs> and there's little pediatric masks as well, with little pediatric bags that scoop like this. Create a proper mask to face seal. It turns out that even though this device delivers the most oxygen, can deliver a more or less 100% oxygen with this, is the least preferred device if you're all by yourself. And that's because it's really hard to use. What you want to do is to seal this around the patient's face at, while ventilating with the bag, but to do that as one person is exceedingly difficult. The best way to make a seal is to position yourself up at the patient's head uh, with all of these masks. To put the mask over the patient's nose and mouth, and then you wrap your fingers around the mask, and you grab down here on jawbone, and then you have to squeeze quite firmly. We can get away with it because our patients probably don't feel a lot of pain, right? but it's not pleasant at all. And we have to squeeze this firmly because otherwise one corner of the mask will be lifted up all our oxygen will just be blowing out to the side. We won't get a chest rise, and we won't be doing our job. So this is the absolute best way to use this, is that one person makes the seal, and another EMT squeezes the bag. If you've got two rescuers to use this, then this is the preferred method. But all by yourself, it's very difficult. If you are all by yourself, probably the book refers to something called the CE grip, which I think is one of the dumbest terms in emergency medicine. But it, it refers to this. Uh, the CE grip 
is you make a C with your hands like so, and that C goes there, and then the remaining three fingers are the shape of a capital E. <laughs> I didn't make this up. And that capital E should go under jawbone like so. And if you've got big hands and a strong grip, you might be able to use that C E grip. You almost must be at the patient's head to do this right. If you're trying to do it from the patient's side, the CE grip ends up looking like this, and you're sort of all up, up in there really weird. But it's, it's more natural to be doing it from here. So to create a seal, that CE grip is the uh, appropriate way. Ventilates with enough volume to produce chest rise. Well, hey, that's squeezing the bag more or less its entire contents like so. It's not necessary for you to do anything funky like wring this bag out and try to get every last bit of oxygen. It's designed so that with just your hands squeezing like this, you're getting the normal tidal volume that an adult wants to breathe. You remember the milliliters on that from your book reading? 4,000? About 1,000, is that right? I truly don't remember myself, so I'd have to look it up. But that's probably something you want to know. I think 500 is the answer, but I'm not sure. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. And you want to ventilate at a rate I need a lot of, of about 12 breaths per minute. 10 to 12 breaths per minute for an adult. And that looks like this. Squeezing with 6 seconds in between. 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. yourself after a short time ventilating. All right, doing good there, buddy. Doing good. And as we'll learn in a future class, this can cause all sorts of other problems that you don't want, and it's bad patient care. If you see people ventilating like this, you should uh, subtly encourage them to study up and, and not ventilate that fast. What yeah, makes it better is to connect it to high flow O2 at 15 meters per minute. See now that reservoir bag starts to accumulate some oxygen. I create my good CE grip seal. And part of my reason too this is working is this thing. Get that thing filled. Oh well. You see how it sucks out a little bit of oxygen each time from reservoir back. I'll know I'm ventilating too fast too when the bag starts to look like this. Uh, I've hyperventilated the patient. I put all that in there. That's no good. So again, ventilate. 1,000, 2,000, 1,000. It says on the sheet, oh, a second EMT arrives. Oh, great. You're going to see you can help? Yeah, come here and help me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to maintain a good seal here. I just want you to squeeze this bag every six seconds. All right. All right, so now I can maintain a seal well. too aggressively. So uh, if I'm over here and I start to get excited and I'm thinking 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. Alright. 
what happens, <laughs> what happens is the lungs, uh, uh, they can't accept that air that quickly. And the epiglottis moves out of the way and pumps some of that air into the stomach. And the stomach will see getting bigger, bigger, bigger. And that's a, yeah, they puke. a sign that you're doing a bad thing. The belly can only hold a finite amount of air and oxygen. At some point, it will just go, oh, hell with this. Ugh. And all the contents of the stomach will come into your patient's airway. Now you've got to roll, suction, 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 and, and take care of that. That's, that's why you only squeeze it from the chest rise. Correct, correct. We're only looking for that subtle chest rise uh, and not anymore.